It is illegal to carry ice cream in your back pocket in the state of Kentucky, and that, my friends, is a fact of life. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to That's the Facts of Life, where we cover all the topics that matter to you and bring you just the facts. Today's topics include data and employees stole, Finner's missing flagpoles, and a regulation loophole. Before we get there, though, let's check in on that naughty list. At the end of last month, a former broker in Chico, California, was permanently barred for stealing from an elderly customer. For nearly two years, he wrote 36 checks totaling nearly $89,000 from the client's checking account. He then deposited these checks into his own account at a third-party bank, Stealings, Savings, and Trust. The client did authorize the broker to pay her rent and other expenses. However, she did not authorize blatant robbery. At times when there wasn't enough money in her checking account to cover his expenses, well, then he would simply transfer money from her savings account. The broker neither admitted nor denied these charges, but did say, I was totally going to pay back those IOUs. The bank did compensate her for her losses, so kudos to the bank. In other news, Morgan Stanley recently fired an employee for stealing client data. The employee allegedly stole sensitive account information from 350,000 of its wealth management clients. That and Steve's tuna sandwich from the fridge. The firm was happy to report that there was no evidence of lost customer money and planned on enhancing security for those potentially affected accounts. Apparently, the employee used an app to download client information and then briefly posted 900 of those clients online. The firm believes the employee was trying to sell this information because they found it on Craigslist under for sale inside information. Not only did the firm take the information offline, but they also destroyed the app and tossed it into the fires of Mordor. The Wall Street Journal recently conducted an examination of Finner's broker check, and the results were, well, not good. According to their data, not all red flags are made public. Apparently, 38,000 brokers have regulatory or financial red flags only on state records, and at least 19,000 of these have a clean broker check. Other things that show up on the state level but not broker check include internal reviews or investigations, which is interesting because brokers who face internal reviews are statistically more likely to have other problems. Finner is going over its rules about what to disclose when brokers lose their jobs for alleged investment-related misconduct and aims to improve that reporting on broker check. They also are reviewing the database and contacting some brokers to find out why they haven't reported some information. Um, I'm guessing it's the same reason no child wants to report to their parents that they got a detention in school. <laughs> the review is about 40% complete and has, prom and has prompted nearly 1,000 brokers to report red flags that were previously not there. Kudos to them too. Finally, the Wall Street Journal has shed some light on an apparent loophole that allows securities bar brokers to sell insurance and other financial products. In an effort to begin patching this oversight, Finner announced this month that they would start providing state insurance regulators with a monthly report of disciplinary actions. Certain states are also making plans to close the gap between the securities and insurance departments. This way, their responses are coordinated after Finner bars someone and are less like the Capulets and the Montagues playing Family Feud. Surprisingly, in some states, an insurance department isn't automatically notified when an agent has been barred. In others, the lag time between department actions can be like waiting for your opponent to finally take their finger off their checker piece, which can take forever. It is a law in some states that insurance agents self-report when they are banned from the securities industry, but it doesn't always happen. Yeah, remember not wanting to tell your parents that you got a detention? Well, this would be like telling them that you got expelled. And that'll do it for today. To find out more industry news, be sure to check out the Compliance Digest, and we'll see you in another couple weeks for another episode of That's the Facts of Life. And in case you didn't know, in 2005, a man named Ronald McDonald actually robbed a Wendy's. And that, my friends, is a fact of life.